In this demonstration, we're going to look at how we can configure the built-in anti-spam and malware protection features that we get with Exchange Server 2019. I've come to my internal Exchange Server, which is lon-ex1, so this is the one that has all the mailboxes on it. Uh, what we're going to do at this point here is we're just going to have a look to see if um, we actually have any of the anti-malware and content filtering enabled. So to do that, we're just going to run a PowerShell commandlet, and the command that we're going to run is going to be the get-content-filtering-config we're then going to take that, we're going to pipe it, which is the shift backslash on my UK keyboard. We're going to format the list and we're going to have a look at everything that's enabled. And as you can see at this point here, it is enabled. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a content filter phrase that will mark anything specified as poker results and will specify that as a bad word. So we'll do that by running another PowerShell commandlet. And the one we're going to run is an add hyphen content filtering phrase. Hyphen influence will be a bad word phrase will be poker results. Now what we'll do at this point here is we'll add a good word and the good word we're going to add will be influence good word. So we're going to do an add hyphen content filtering phrase, hyphen influence, good word, phrase will be report document. So when things don't work what we'll also want as well is we want a quarantine mailbox and we do that by using our set hyphen content filter config space hyphen quarantine mailbox uh, we've already created a mailbox called quarantine so we'll specify quarantine at datum.com as our quarantine mailbox so now we've done that the next thing we want to do is we want to specify a thing called a spam confidence level and the spam confidence level goes along the lines of anything that's zero is definitely not spam and if we go all the way up to nine that is definitely spam so what we want to do is we want to specify a threshold to say when we'll accept email, when we'll reject email, when we'll delete email. And we're going to do all of that by using the set hyphen content filtering config. We're going to go for spam confidence level rejection enable. We're going to go true. We're going to specify the threshold to be eight. So that's quite high. Uh, what we'll do is we'll specify the quarantine enable true and we'll specify the quarantine threshold to be seven. So basically anything when we do all these tests against our email, the exchange system will then generate the spam confidence level anything that's seven fine what we'll do is we'll quarantine that in the quarantine mailbox we've just created so what we'll do at this point here is we'll just run that commandlet now we've done that next thing we'll do is we'll specify a rejection response and we're going to do that by doing a set hyphen content filter config hyphen rejection response your message was rejected by our spam filter please contact your administrator and then what we're going to do at this point here is we're just going to specify our organization level, the set hyphen organization config. We're going to specify spam confidence level, junk threshold will be six. So low than quarantine. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have a look at how we configure our sender and recipient filtering. So sender recipient filtering is exactly that. It's filtering out certain senders and recipient is disallowing certain internal people to not be able to receive certain email. So what we're going to do to start with is we'll just do our set hyphen sender filter config hyphen block senders and we're going to block marketing at contoso.com. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go for set hyphen recipient filter config. So block list enabled true and we're going to block recipient help desk at adapen.com. And now we've done that. Next thing to do is we're going to configure the anti-malware options that we get with an exchange server. So we need to change directory. So all we're going to do at this point here is we're going to change directory into program files, Microsoft Exchange Server v15 scripts. Then once we're in that directory, what we're then going to do is we're then going to enable the anti-spamware um, anti scanning. And as we can see at this point here, the anti-malware engines are updating, so this may take a few minutes. It's going to take more than a few minutes because this lab environment that I'm currently working in doesn't have any internet connectivity. So what we'll do is we will just wait for it to time out, and then what we'll do is we'll then just restart all of the agents that we need for the anti-malware. So now we've timed out, next thing to do is we'll just restart the agents. So all we're going to do at this point here is we're just going to restart our service MS Exchange Transport.
we wait for that service to restart. Once it's restarted, all we'll do is we'll just make sure that everything is working correctly. So we'll do that with a get hyphen transport agent. Now what we're looking for here is as we can see true all the way down so we've got everything set to true. Now what we'll do is we'll just configure the default anti-malware policy. So to do that we need to go into the Exchange Admin Center. Then in our Exchange Admin Center what we're going to do at this point here is we're just going to go to our protection. And in our protection we have our malware filter. So what we'll do at this point here is we'll just edit the default anti-malware filter. So just on the general page, the general page is general information, so we can see it's called default. It should really have a description in there, but it's a lab, so not too much of a problem. We then go to our settings. So what we have in our settings is we have some settings that we can put in place here. So malware detection response. So when malware is detected in any attachment, select whether to delete the entire message or to delete all message attachments. It will be a bit unfair just to delete everything, so let's just delete all attachments and use a custom alert text. So we'll just type in some information here. Now what we're going to put in here is the attachment has been deleted because it contained malware. Contact the administrator. Then moving down we have our notifications. So let's notify the internal senders and the external senders. So as well, in the case of sends a message to the sender of the undelivered message. Uh, what we're going to do at this point here is we'll notify administrator about undelivered messages from internal senders. Uh, we're going to do that to administrate at datum.com and we're going to do the same thing from external senders and again we're just going to specify administrator at datum.com. In the case of my customized notification, so I could use customized notification text if I want, so from name, from address, put a subject in and put in a message so they get a bit more information within the non-delivery report. Not going to bother with that. Our messages to external senders, again, we can put in a subject and we can put a message in place as well. Once we've changed all of the settings, last thing to do is select save. And what we've done at this point here is we've set up the internal exchange system to use anti-malware support. And we're doing that by creating customized lists. Another way to do anti-malware, you could always use some sort of subscription service, such as um, people like iCritical or Mail Defender or Exchange Online Protection. And that's the end of this demonstration of configuring anti-malware support in Exchange Server 2019. Thank you.